Hi there, welcome to Glenn here. Today I'll show you how to generate really cool metallic sounds and glitches like, like these ones. To create these neat sounds, we'll be taking advantage of something called aliasing in audio. If you don't know about aliasing, uh, let me explain it really quick. All audio signals are just combinations of many different waves at various frequencies. When you capture the signal using a digital recording system, it will end up being band limited because you can only sample so many individual points in that original signal. The amount of points you record every second is called the sample rate. So if your signal has frequencies above what the sample rate can handle, it'll end up looping back down. And this is called aliasing and it's usually considered a very bad sounding artifact. However, for the sound design technique I'm going to show you today, we want those exact artifacts. So make sure there are no anti-aliasing measures in place before doing anything. Most digital audio workstations have settings for audio resampling somewhere. Just have a quick search on the internet and you should know where to look. In FL Studio it's here for real-time audio and here for rendering. To make sure we'll get lots of juicy aliasing artifacts, I load up a very simple synth with no built-in anti-aliasing filter and just crank up the pitch a bunch. Immediately you can see and hear the sine wave I'm playing bounce back into lower frequencies. If I play a saw wave instead, you can hear how the aliasing artifacts alter the waveform into something completely different. So everything is working just fine, or not, but like, that's the point today. Instead of making patches of our own that we'll mangle later, I'll be using lots of random songs from a music folder instead. This way we don't have to generate hours of material before we get to have some fun. Make sure to select pieces of music that are generally soft and dynamic, and not brick walls of loud noise, otherwise the results might suffer a little. Oh, I forgot to mention you have to watch this render for f***ing hours! Now we just pitch up this music a bunch without any fancy stretching algorithms. Just regular old pitching up that makes the sample shorter, you know? Since we're pitching up all our sample summit, basically all of the audio will turn into aliasing artifacts, forming completely new sounds in the process. Now we render this beauty and listen to the results. I already mentioned this before, but something you might notice here is that the parts that were loud before processing sound really messy and harsh afterwards. Maybe you'll find these bits useful, but I personally don't really like them, so I tend to only use softer music as my raw input material. Here's something else I tried out. Downloading a bunch of episodes of a podcast to see how voices would sound after processing with this weird, weird technique. I personally don't really listen to podcasts, so the only one I know of is the Tone Vendors podcast. It's about sound design and stuff. I've heard lots of nice things about it, so this was my choice of audio material. Here's what it sounds like before processing. I was having to detect all of that in real time. And after processing. These results aren't that interesting, if you ask me. Podcasts consisting of basically just people talking are pretty monotone, if you squint your ears and broadly listen to hours and hours of content. I'm absolutely not saying they're boring or anything, just that for the specific sound design technique there's probably better raw audio we could use. That being said, I also tried selecting a bunch of random samples and recordings from my archives and processing those as well. I thought since I've got all kinds of weird sounds in my absolutely massive audio stockpile, there must be something interesting sounding in here. Okay, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> render, gonna render the audio, gonna render the audio.
And there's a lot of different noises in here. Not all of them sound that pleasing, truth be told, but I assure you, just by taking some time to go through your results and pick up the ones you truly find useful, nice sounding or just interesting, you can make yourself a sweet little collection of sounds that I don't think you can create with any other technique. And here's some of my favorite ones that I've made this way. Since we always massively shrink our samples with this technique, most sounds just end up being extremely short and basically just sharp clicks that don't sound too nice if you ask me. Now if we instead use super slow and soft music as our input, like entire albums of ambient and calm tracks, in theory we should get rid of those clickies. I don't know a lot of music like this, so I just went on a little scavenger hunt through the depths of SoundCloud and Bandcamp. After I had downloaded way more than enough tracks, I once again slapped them together into yet another long audio noodle. And then I felt studio crashed. Around this time I realized it's probably a bad idea to combine too many tracks into one file, because my computer just can't handle it. I experimented with a bunch of different lengths and found that 2 to 3 hours is usually may okay. Your system might be weaker or much more powerful than mine, so results will vary. Oh, one more thing, sticking together these tracks and rendering takes ages. Often I'm sitting here looking at the silly little progress bar for hours on end. If you know of a more time efficient way to do this, Please let me know in the comments. Okay, now on to the results. I think that these slower paced ambient tracks work really nicely for the sound design technique. Not everything sounds perfect of course, but we've got a huge amount of incredibly cool metallic sounds in here. I generally could just sit here and create sounds like this all day. And that's exactly what I did. I spent way too many days making a bazillion sounds using this technique, carefully picked out the best ones and put them into a sample pack together with a lot of other sounds that I carefully handcrafted for this project. If you remember my video about designing super fun and wonky percussion loops with granular delays, I also put a bunch of sounds I made with that technique into the sample pack. They're kind of in the same genre of weird metallic glitchy witchy noises, so they fit together very nicely. The sample pack is called Data Hammer and will be available tomorrow if you're watching this video on release day. Oh, did I mention it's completely free? If you enjoy my free stuff or think that my sound design videos are helping you learn new things about the wondrous world of audio chaos, please consider throwing some spare change at me over on my Patreon page. To showcase all the neat things you can do with these sounds, I made a little track almost exclusively using stuff from the sample pack. The track is obviously also called Data Hammer and should, by the time this video is done, be already available here on YouTube, Bandcamp and maybe even Spotify. This lovely artwork was done by my friend Rustnutty. Make sure to check out her socials if you like the cover art. And that should be everything. Thanks for watching my video all the way to the end. If you've enjoyed today's dive into this schwoopsy sound design technique, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you happen to have some spare coins lying around and would like to support me and my videos, please consider pledging a few dollars on my Patreon page. And as always, I would like to highly thank all my current patrons for supporting me for keeping this stuff alive and just being really cool and poggers. So special thanks to Tobin, Catherine, Iris, Great, Captain Bubs, Zaki VR, Anna Koek, Misty Burgess, Katana, Sophia Figueroa, Foxy Vivi, Gray Figment, Christy Kamari, Rachel Ray Mills, Jane the Human, Teddy Edwards, Declan, Silver, Kudo Sound, Windu, Lou, Ellie Spectacular, Dennis Quinn, Hexagon, Sora, Andy Chamberlain, DJX328, Benjamin Burns, Dive to the Heart, Robin Song, Alison Madden, Alex, Mikkel Armstrup, Jay Manning, Flower Gothic, Matt MML Lucas, 
Rainbow Messenger, Ram, Day, Tenby, Blue V12, Toffer and Selmo, Seerpit Aphrodite, Sprite on Balls, <laughs> Lily Lennon, and Felix. Again, thank you so, so much to all of you. It's been, wow, it's been heckin' torment making this video, but it's done and I'm very proud of it and I hope you enjoyed it. And oh, it's way too warm right now. I'm gonna like jump into a puddle or something. Uh, I'll see you next time when I make more funny sounds. Okay, bye.